One day in heaven God said, Now that my children, the people, are grown, may I take a vacation. The people in the land of the angels began to discuss this statement. Gabriel's reaction made it clear that God had made this suggestion many times before during the weekly meeting. Gabriel is not happy with the idea. In fact, he makes this suggestion before the meeting has even begun. But her position does not change God's mind. He is enthusiastic about the idea of taking a vacation. Finally, God decides to offer to take all the archangels with him on his vacation. He sees no problem in taking a vacation because people have been doing without him for a long time. And when they do ask, it is only in a few isolated cases. And these isolated cases are related to the desire to marry a celebrity or to conquer the world. That is why God considers it necessary for everyone to take a holiday and go on vacation. Someone appears in the arena who is totally against this idea of God. After all, the heavens are now faced with a more urgent problem than solving simple human problems. This is Uriel. Uriel then asks God not to change his appearance, which he finally agreed to. It is a fact that nowadays the heavens and the human world have become almost identical due to the development of the latter. At the same time, human intellectual abilities and society in general have reached such a level of development that the powers and abilities of angels are lost against this background. At the same time, the percentage of people who ignore agreements with the devil is growing at an alarming rate. Simply put, people have stopped depending on heaven, and as a result, unemployment has increased. God was very surprised to see the number of people looking for work in heaven. Lucifer has exactly the same problems finding a job. It seems that God had an idea how to solve this problem. What was this idea? God proposed to create a company that would employ both angels and demons. The reaction of the audience showed that they were shocked. They were very shocked by God's idea. The first ever organization of cooperation between heaven and hell was established to oversee the third generation created by man. It was called the Catholic Society. And these two are the ones who make sure that the third generation observes moral and ethical principles. They are employees of the law enforcement department. And it should be added that they still ignore moral and ethical standards of behavior in the workplace. Although no, this is just a shameful dream of one of them. It's embarrassing when someone comes to wake you up with whom you did indecent things in your sleep a few years ago. And it's his childhood friend, too. Let's get to know each other. This is Ginger. He works in the Law Enforcement Department, Division 3, and is in love with his childhood friend, Rama. They are both in charge of handling civil petitions from third-generation people. He often has embarrassing dreams in which he never sees his girlfriend's face. Here are our main characters, Ginger and Ram. And this is the head of the Law Enforcement Department, Group 1, Sidia. She noticed Ram's hard work since school and gave him the task for today. But today he was late again. It was all because of Ginger, who likes to take long naps. If only they knew what kind of dreams he has. Ginger is well aware of his guilt. The bot can't even count the number of times he's fallen asleep at the beginning of the workday and apologizes. Ginger and Rama are waiting for civil petitions, but they are not on Ginger's mind at the moment. They're not petitions at all, but various scenes involving Rama. Mano, the head of the publishing department of Group 1, appeared on the scene. He's a real shipper of the two. Mono doesn't miss the opportunity to ask when Ginger's dreams and wishes will be realized, if ever. Maybe Ginger should start by confessing his feelings. If he continues to drag his feet, then a player like Mono may enter the arena of the battle for Ram's heart. Their dialogue was interrupted by Mono, who told Ginger to go to work. Meanwhile, Ginger wondered if he should confess his feelings to Ram. But for Ram, he is just a childhood friend. What if he told him and Ram rejected him? Then even their friendship would be over. In that case, he should not admit that he has not lost his friend. While Ginger pondered his dilemma, Ram decided to take action with a citizen's petition. Then someone appeared on their horizon, blocking their path. He was a man who liked to show off his body without hesitation. He enjoyed the process of demonstration. Rama's conversation with such people is short. It is clear that he killed him with one blow. This is Ram's style. He can't control himself. And this happens to him all the time. So Ginger usually tries to calm him down. And now the man who liked to take his clothes off has been calmed down. It would be more accurate to say that he was calmed down by a single punch from Ram. So, after analyzing Ram's behavior, Ginger realized that once he confessed his feelings, embarrassment would not be a problem. Ram will most likely take away his manhood, and that is a very frightening thought. That's why Ginger should not rush into a confession and try to stay calm. This is the only option for him right now. Meanwhile, we meet Graham, Mono's younger brother. He works in the logistics department. The younger brother immediately notices that his older brother is in a good mood which means that he has been playing with Ginger again. Mono explains to his younger brother that he is not only helping Ginger with his fantasies, but also with something else. The thing is, if Mono doesn't interfere, things will move rather slowly, and he doesn't want that to happen. Therefore, he wants to speed up the process and bring it to a halt. Let's get to know Ram better. He is a member of the Law Enforcement Department, Group 3. He works with Ginger. 
He has a rather negative attitude towards any manifestation of indecency, probably because he has three older sisters. He is impulsive and often starts fights when he comes in, one of the ten strongest employees in the company. Saidea wants to talk to Ram. Judging by her expression, it won't be an easy conversation. She is interested in where Ginger is now, and there has been so much fuss about it. During the conversation, they both notice that Ginger is not feeling well today. Ram notices that he has been like this since the morning, probably because he didn't sleep well. But sleep is not the reason for Ginger's bad mood. It was Mano who spoiled it for him by saying that he wanted to get back together with Ram. In his fantasies, Ginger already sees them together. Mano has already entered Ginger's dreams. Cedia came to talk about the recent beating. Even though he doesn't remember it, Ram kicked him and he shouldn't have done that. Not to be outdone, Ram tried to justify his actions. He began with a detailed description of the obscenities this man was demonstrating to the public. So she asked him to stop giving such a detailed description. And when Ram explained another case of beating a man, which he also thought was quite just, Ginger asked him if he really thought that such behavior on his part was right. This put all three at a disadvantage and made them feel uncomfortable. Let's look at the facts. In the Catholic society, the law enforcement system includes the enforcer, usually the position of a demon, and the corrector, which is the work of an angel. It appears that Ginger is the corrector in this team, but Ram doesn't see the point of correcting, and even hinted that the first team doesn't do it either. Sidia is angry at his requests because Ram is showing disrespect to Ginger and risks being suspended from the team. Of course, there are many people in the third generation who have lost their way, but that doesn't mean they should be beaten up. There are some who are not completely hopeless, and the next task for Ginger and Ram is to correct them. No hitting or beating. Ram notes that it won't be easy, but he can do it. Ginger also agrees to take on this task and complete it with all the conditions. Here is the one you must correct. He was a good man at first, but later he lost his way and became a lover of blondes. That's why Ram sent Ginger, who is a blonde, to deal with the blonde lover. So what will happen next? It looks like Ginger is going to run away. But no, he's trying his best to talk to the blonde lover. After a loud bang, we are invited to meet Ida. She's the head of the law enforcement department, Team 1, one of the best fighters in the department. She specializes in coercing third-generation monsters. She treats her colleagues like younger siblings, works alone, and can often act like a child. It looks like our blonde uncle is going to do something bad to our blonde boy. Will Ram just stand by and watch? Ram asked this uncle to think about it and remember the person who is dear and important to him. He asked him to come to his senses, but the uncle did not give up and continued to love blondes. Oh no, our redhead is in danger. Ginger had no choice but to crawl. The blonde lover even liked it. He likes pussies that try to run away from him. That makes it even more interesting. But Ginger definitely didn't like this course of events. Ram's fist came to Ginger's rescue. Ram rescued him and hinted that he was not very good at correcting people. Ram's fist only made the blonde lover angrier, so he and Ginger decided to switch to unlimited mode to defeat him. And now the transition of law enforcement group 3 to unlimited mode is complete. It doesn't look like their opponent will give up. He's so happy to see them take off their clothes. Is that it for him? Ram has come in again with his fist. Ginger ties up the bully and asks Ram to tell her in the future before he does something. Have they really managed to rehabilitate this seemingly hopeless uncle? It turns out that he used to like a girl, and then one day she brought in a crooked guy and said he was her boyfriend. Ginger suggested that this man should open his heart to this girl and confess to her. In any case, there is someone in this world who will like him. Ginger also added that it was definitely not him. Meanwhile, Ram is confident that people like this third-generation representative will do something similar again, because for people like him, everything repeats itself. The compulsion is over. Ram confesses to Ginger that he has learned from this assignment that petitions are best resolved through dialogue. Suddenly, Ginger asked Ram how he felt about Mono. Ram has a hard time answering this question because he neither likes nor dislikes Mono. He doesn't know him very well and doesn't want to know him better. Ginger was amused by this answer and started to laugh. A new morning has come, and the beginning of a new day and new possibilities. And for some reason this morning began with Ginger staring at him. He didn't seem to understand why he was being honored. And what's worse, no sooner had he entered the office than his boss called him in. She was so sweet when she talked to him. Ginger was frankly shocked. What does the boss want? There's something wrong here. Did she find out about his unsuccessful attempt to fix the blonde guy? So what is in store for our redhead? An additional investigation? A suspension trial? Or maybe he'll be fired? The conversation began with emphasis on the fact that Ginger is always late for work, and today he was late as well. The boss wondered why this was happening, insomnia, something bothering him. She then suggested that it might have something to do with Ram. From Ginger's reaction, she realized that she had hit the nail on the head and it was true. 
Well, it all makes sense to her because of the way Ginger looks at him, the way she acts around him, and by the way, she's not the only one who's noticed it. Ginger was shocked. He couldn't understand what she meant by, yes, it's true. She went on to ask if he would tell Ram how he felt. Ginger has heard this a lot lately, but he told his boss that he was not going to tell Ram right now. She understood his words because they have been friends since childhood. Ginger also shared his thoughts that he was unlikely to become more than a friend to Ram. Someone entered the room. It was Mono sleeping in the office. Ginger had not seen him since their last conversation. He had avoided this meeting. He must have heard the whole conversation because he suggested that Ram ask him what he thought about the situation. The headmaster liked the idea and took Ginger by the hand to explore the situation. The principal brought ice cream for Ram and asked him directly what he thought of his robot partner, Ginger. Ram now understood what the two of them had been talking about in the office and asked him what he had said to a similar question about himself. Ginger exclaimed that it was confidential information. What does Ram think of Ginger? To him, the answer is obvious. Ginger is a childhood friend. Ram then began to list all of Ginger's shortcomings as a team member. He listed so many things that Ginger could not stand it and ran out of the room. After Ginger left the room, the boss asked Ram why he had done this to him, and he replied that the only thing to admire about Ginger was his looks. But he shouldn't have praised him for that, should he? The boss asked if he really thought Ginger was attractive. Ram replied that he kind of liked Ginger's face. Meanwhile, Mono found Ginger in tears. Mono asked what had happened. And there are big doubts whether Mono is really interested in Ram. After all, the way he behaves with Ginger, you might think he is interested in him. Who is Mono? He is the head of the organization department. He is the one who assigns tasks to the teams. He also likes to make fun of Ginger's crush on Ram. Mono took Ginger to the bathroom so that he could deal with the physiological effects of his encounter with Ram. To make things easier for Ginger, he activated his angelic ability. It turns out that he can transform into others. So he became an exact replica of Ram. Well, that helped. So now Ginger actually did this to Mono. How much worse can it get? Someone has a stress disorder. It turns out that Mono's powers are a figment of her imagination, so they're both to blame for what happened. Ginger tried to calm down so his demonic instincts wouldn't take over. Mono's conversation reveals that Idea is a Cupid. Ginger didn't know this even though it was written on her dog tag. Now all her thoughts are about Ginger and his unrequited love. Mono is amused by the ice cream story and Idea's question to Ram. Their conversation is interrupted by Idea who comes in without knocking and apologizes to Ginger for ruining everything. Mono explained that Ginger ran out of the room because he had to go to the toilet. Well, yeah. Idea admitted she was so sorry. She had tried so hard to make him feel good, but it was the opposite. When no one expected it, Mono offered his help in this difficult matter. Ginger realizes that Mono is the one person he can't trust. He is not sure if he has a conscience. Mono's younger brother Graham turns out to be an angel of revelation. He sees the future in his dreams. And recently he saw Ginger mated with Ram. Therefore, they definitely have a chance for a relationship. Graham's dreams are prophetic. But revelation shows only part of the future. To see everything, one must put the pieces together. And a mentor can help. That is Mono himself. And fortunately, he has already found the connecting thread. It is up to Ginger to believe it or not. In the meantime, let's meet Graham. He works in the logistics department. He delivers third-generation cubes to the company. He is Mono's younger brother. He sees the future in his dreams, but not clearly. So his brother helps him decipher what he sees. This is Rose, an employee of the organization department, an administrative assistant. She has gone on a business trip and her work has fallen to these two. She went to look for Lego from the delivery department who always disappears somewhere and hasn't come back for his shift. He is the thread Mono was talking about. It turns out that it was Rose who went looking for Lego because they have been friends since childhood. She knows him well, so she has a better chance of finding him. But this doesn't make Ginger very happy because he has to do Rose's work while she's away. Mono suggested that Ginger take advantage of the fact that he and Ram both sit in the office and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. But how can you talk to him when he's always working? Thanks to his office job, Ginger can still watch and admire Ram while he works. This is one of the advantages of an office job. The disadvantage is that you have to work there too, a lot of work. Working in an office reminded both of their student days. Ram's talk of the past brought tears to his eyes. He felt that everything was the same as before. When he woke up, Ram had already done all the work for him and had fallen asleep himself. And for some reason he decided to come closer to his face. Let's meet Rose. She works in the organization department, Group 1. She always does her work perfectly. She is a childhood friend of Lego, which is why she has become an expert at tracking him down. Ginger was sure that their friendship was over now that he was so close to Ram's face. He would never forgive him for what Ginger was about to do, but... Ram asked if he was hot because he was burning all over. He was indeed hot, probably because he was tired, so he asked Ginger to bring him some cold water. Ram wants to continue working in spite of his tiredness. Ram smelled alcohol. It turned out not to be a bottle of water, but alcohol. 
Mr. Mono did his best. It turned out that Ram was getting drunk rather quickly and that his behavior in that state was not good. Meanwhile, Rose did her job. The Lego has been delivered to the ministry, and he is clearly not eager to tell Mono where he has been this week and what he has done in the human world. To avoid such situations, Mono suggested installing a tracking device on the Lego. From that day on, all his deliveries are tracked by Mono. That's how the Lego got into Mono's hands. This is what happens when you don't do your job on time. It turns out that Lego doesn't wear anything under his shirt. And at this very moment, they are watching a picture of how Ram behaves when he is drunk. Everything looks different than it really is. Ginger attacked Mono, claiming that he had alcohol in his office. Mono explained that he was there for an important occasion, and how the two of them dared to drink it. Mono then pointed out that Ram was unconscious, so he might as well seize the day. Mono asked Lego to help Ram and Ginger get home. Ginger sees Lego for the first time. The view during the Lego delivery is spectacular. Lego sits down next to him and starts talking about the half-breed and how the rumors are true. This makes Ginger angry, and he says he is out of line. Lego apologized for being so blunt and said that if it turned out to be true, the story would be quite interesting. He then offered to sign a contract with Ginger. Let's meet Ginger's mother. Her name is Layla. She is an angel of purity and has had the greatest influence on Ginger's spirit. Their relationship is more like that of brother and sister. Meanwhile, Ginger is interested in the fact that only higher demons can make contracts, and Lego comes out and suggests that he breaks the law. Lego responds by suggesting that they make an agreement instead of a contract. Lego explains to Ginger that Mono has put him in a difficult situation, so he offers to help him in return for Ginger doing something for him. Ginger found this offer rather suspicious, but he remembered what Mono had said and that Lego was the link, so he decided to agree and trust Mono. Lego realized that the half-breed Ginger was in no hurry to trust him. With a smile on his face, Lego said that they were both selfish and that even though Ginger did not trust him now, when he needed help, Ginger would call him. Ginger woke up in the morning to find Ram beside him. Ginger mentioned that they were not allowed to enter the ram because they were drunk. Then the ram grabbed him and wouldn't let go. Ginger decided to take advantage of the moment and watch Ram sleep. He is still sleeping, wrapped in the sheet like a caterpillar. Even the back of Ram's head looks very cute. This is the first time they have slept together since they became adults. Suddenly, Ginger realized that he had to go away because there might be trouble. Ram woke up and saw everything. Ginger's father is a very good cook. It is a hobby of his. It turns out that Ginger's father is a demonic spirit who controls sexual pleasure. Ginger remembers how much fun his childhood was because of who his father is. Ginger's mother is not at home because it is going to snow soon. She has flown out to help. She always does that. At work, Ginger is given an armband, which means that his group is doing a newcomer orientation this year. Ginger has forgotten all about this tradition and doesn't seem happy about it. Let's learn more about Lego. Rose is a shipping clerk and a childhood friend. He can teleport between worlds thanks to his wings. He likes to sign contracts, and if he is gone for a long time, expect trouble. He is on the organization department's blacklist. The day of new employee orientation has arrived. Ginger was very nervous, and Ram took the initiative to conduct the orientation. The meeting was a great success. Ram took her hand, and this was the only way Ginger could keep her composure. Ginger was not feeling well, and you could see it on his face. Lego saw him in the crowd and said hello. Ram said that Ginger had made new friends, referring to Lego. Ram looked at Lego and thought that he looked rather suspicious and therefore advised Ginger to stay away from him, as if he had read Ginger's mind. Perry brings in one of the newcomers, Mananin. He comes from a military family and will be working in the law enforcement department. His reputation leaves a lot to be desired. His partner recently left him. Mono started hiding from him, so his relationship with Mananon's family is not good. Later, Mono noticed that Mananon looks a lot like his father, which makes him even more afraid. Mananin said that rumor has it that the best people are being sent to this company, but so far, he has not been impressed. He sees it as a mere collection of lesser demons, but Ram is very different from them and should be suitable. Mananan then explained that he was not interested in demons and did not want to be associated with a demon. In fact, he had heard somewhere that one of the angels was working in that department. He meant idea. This kind of talk made Ginger want to hit him, and if the war between them was still going on, he would have done just that. Idea is quite strong and is considered to be the strongest in the department. Since she is a Cupid, she was immediately assigned to the romance section. On her very first day at work, she met a man whom she immediately sent to count the stars on his fist. It was around this time that Idea came to visit her. Since she and Ginger have partners, and Mananin needs someone strong, she found a partner for him. This is Man. Man's hands were shaking and he didn't look strong. But Idea pointed out that he was the only one besides her who could do the job alone. I wonder if these two will work together. More on Perry. She's Idea's partner, and since patching doesn't have the same results as forcing, she decided to stay in the office in case there was an urgent announcement to make. Ram and Ginger begin working with newcomers. 
The security of this huge cube, which houses the entire third generation, is dependent on the company and its departments. Only law enforcement and organizational personnel have access to it, but even they have to get it first. The cube may look cute from the outside, but it's huge on the inside. The creatures inside are usually divided into species and rotate around their orbits, stopping at a certain distance from each other. If there is a malfunction in this mechanism, it must be repaired according to the instructions. And when Ginger suggested that we move from theory to practice, Mana's face showed that he wanted to try it. The next area to be presented was the horror zone. Man was very excited about it. Mananen was more looking forward to the idea zone because he thought it was more dangerous and therefore more interesting. As Man watched, Mananen did not believe that he and his zone were something really strong and could interest him. But he had to see this zone. Mananen decides to play along with him, thinking that he should be happy to see Man trying so hard. Suddenly something black and menacing appears in front of him. This black, ominous shadow is immediately cast by Mananen. He attributes it to his carelessness, and he should not have been so relaxed. When he looked up, he saw something that surprised him. The man was caressing the black shadow. Not only was he stroking it, he was talking to it. And then he easily put it back into the cube without even struggling. Mananen was shocked and did not understand how he had done it. The man then invited Mananen into his office. As man took out the first aid kit to treat Mananen's wound, he noticed a large number of books in the office. Mananen thought about the creature that had attacked him a few minutes ago, and asked Man what it was. Man called the creature Popo and said it was a sweetie. It was just a sweetie. Popo is actually the embodiment of evil puppy spirits. And since Man had seen her quite often, they had become friends. And she even had a name, Popo. Man had been visiting her for a long time, which was probably why she was worried today. Man is very fond of dogs, so he did this to Popo. But Mananen thinks that this is not the reason for their friendship. In fact, man is quite strong, very strong, and not the weakling he seems at first glance. Man began to deny Mananan's assumption, saying that it was actually Idea who was strong. Mananan apologized to man for underestimating his strength and thinking he was weak. Therefore, Mananan did not show him the respect he deserved. In fact, man is strong enough to be his partner. Man was shocked by Mananan's statement and behavior. Mananan works in the second group of the law enforcement department. He comes from a military family that was responsible for his education and upbringing. Because of this, Mananan has socialization problems, and the only thing he can respect is strength. As we all know, Mananan's family is trying to keep power, so he needs something from man. Man seems shocked by what he needs. Man should carry his child, and I am completely shocked by this statement. Man laughingly reminds Mananan that he is a man, and men are not capable of bearing children. However, Mananan has a way of accomplishing this by the use of force. Man says that Mananan's family will not be happy with the idea because he is a demon, and the child will be a half-breed. Mananan replies that he is too old to think of such trifles now. How old is he then? He's the same age as man's father. This amused him. According to Mananan, the age difference is important for humans, but they are not humans. He also noticed that he liked man. He blushed around him. So why not? Man explained that he always had a red face, so it didn't mean he was in love. Mananan was not deterred. He still has plenty of time to make man fall in love with him. Man doesn't understand why this is happening to him. Why must he do this? He asks Mananen to stop, but Mananen will not. And while man thinks how to stop him, Ginger does it without hesitation and hits Mananen with the book. Mananen said there was nothing wrong with his behavior. He acted that way because he thought man was a good partner for him. And that's how you treat a partner. Ginger started talking about how it is possible to have a relationship at work. But before you do something like what he stopped, you have to confess your feelings first. And then that's it. Still, Ginger wondered if Mananen's approach was really more effective than his. But the logic was lost somewhere, because at the beginning of their acquaintance, Mananen had said that he wanted nothing to do with demons. And now it turns out that he doesn't care if the human is a demon or an angel. Mananen has no way out, for the most powerful angel is not interested in him. When Mananen saw Man, he immediately took up the matter and invited him. Mananen's tactics of conquest still do not leave Ginger alone. Manday, aka Man, is an employee of the Law Enforcement Department, Group 2. After his partner left, he started working alone. Although he looks young, he is actually quite old. He likes human culture very much. Ginger does not remember when he first met Rom, because they have always been together since they were born. They even got their names at the same time and together. In fact, Ginger's first memory is of Ram. But when he began to fall in love with Rom, it is difficult to say. They lived in the same neighborhood as Ram, and he liked to eat Ginger's father's baked goods. And when he was a child, Ginger was bullied by the local children. This neighborhood was a demon neighborhood, and Ginger was visited because he was a half-breed, that is, half-demon. To be honest, Ginger didn't care what people said about him, but Ram did. He always fought bullies to protect Ginger. This was the first time Ginger felt ashamed of his background, and he learned that Ram always worried about him. Ram then admitted that he was protecting him as a friend, and that these kids were just hooligans to him. 
And when you think about it, angels are better than demons. That was probably when it happened. Ginger's memories faded as Ram entered his room. Ram came to check on him because Ginger had been acting strangely lately. Ginger went on to say that he needed to keep an eye on Mr. Man for a while because of the situation there, that things could get out of hand. However, it seems that Man has managed to find an influence on Mananin and he is listening to him now. Ram reminded Ginger of the first snow festival and asked if they would go together. Ginger apologized and said he had to take care of these two and they could continue their conversation later. Meanwhile, another friend of Man's came to see him, and this time he scared Ginger and Ram. A message came from Perry. The sea level creature has entered the horror zone. All available employees have been asked to go there. This is Sitri, Ginger's father. He is a demon of sexual pleasure, but began to repress his nature after meeting Ginger's mother. Now he is the Lord of Desserts. One day in his childhood, Ginger caught his father doing something rather interesting, which influenced his fantasies. It seems that Ginger is still angry with him for this. Meanwhile, man cannot understand at all what is happening. Perry is not sure what exactly has infiltrated the horror zone, suggesting that it may be related to the beginning of winter on the Celtic calendar. This is the time when the immortals can enter the human world. It was an octopus that man chose to deal with. Perry, after analyzing the damage to the cube, noticed that one of the groups of newcomers was trapped. She reported this to Ginger. The instructor of this group is none other than Ram. Ram tried to stop the Kraken so that the newcomers could escape, but the Kraken was much stronger than Ram expected. Man asked Mananan to keep an eye on Nimeko so that he could help solve the problem. Mananan agreed, and in return made Man promise to consider his offer, to think it over more thoroughly, so to speak. Man agreed and warned Mananan that he would think about it, but did not promise a positive answer. Mananan will be very glad to meet Man, even if it is not immediately. It was a sensual conversation. Ram interrupted her and asked her to stop talking and finally help him. The man grabbed the octopus by its tentacle and found that it was extremely slippery. Soon the man decided to wound the octopus and it woke up. Mananan left Nimeko and rushed to help. Ram is wounded. When he opened his eyes he saw Ginger with horns. Ginger was indignant that Ram should worry about horns in such a situation. Because of this, Ginger would not be able to work for some time. So Ram asked him to choose a demon form. Idea came to the rescue. She started to apologize for being late. It was Halloween and everyone was going crazy. The man's eyes showed that he was very afraid of something. This was his reaction to seeing Mananen without the girl he had left in his care. Mananen explained that she had gone somewhere while he was trying to save her. Mananen assumed that she had run away somewhere. How can you assume that? said Man angrily, clenching his fists. She was small and defenseless, so of course she was afraid. That's why Man had asked Mananen to take care of her. What if something happened to Nimeko and she was hurt? Mananen agreed that perhaps something bad had happened to her, but he did not care. Some third generation being or Mr. Man. Of course, the choice was obvious to Mananen, and it was Man who had to be saved. I don't know what your reasons were for making this decision, but I asked you to take care of her, Man cried. Man asked you to trust him to protect Nimiko, not to save him. After this dialogue, Man called Idea. He had a request for her to find a new partner for Mananen. The two did not work out. We meet Ram's older sister, Tini. She designs and repairs uniforms. She once again reprimands Ginger for the ruined uniform. Teeny had repeatedly told Ginger to choose a demon form, but he was always extremely stubborn and would not listen to her. Did he not choose this form because of Rama? While she was mending his clothes, Ginger Teeny began to explain to him that Rama spares not only demons, but angels as well. At this point, Ram confessed that as a child he had been in love with Ginger's mother. This shocked him and Tinny. Teeny also admitted that she liked Ginger's mother, but it was not true love. She said goodbye and advised Ginger to change his uniform because it didn't fit him well and it was torn. Ginger is afraid to accept his identity because of all kinds of negative thoughts and fears. Meanwhile, Mananan is not happy about the fact that they will be looking for another partner and asks that no one interfere. Mananan takes Mana's hand and lets him know that he will not run away from him. Mananan waits for an answer. And the answer must be yes. Any other answer will not satisfy Mananan. Mananan's room was a mess, with books scattered everywhere. Mananan assumed that he was still searching for a book that would help him find the creature. So it is alive and you will try to find it? Mananan asked. Of course he would seek it. The man was about to go in search of it. Mananan is not against him going to look for Nimeko, but he needs to hear the answer to his question first. 